in, in fact, here's a, a, a model of a submarine. I just happened to have it. Uh, uh, and uh, this is 350 uh, uh, ratio. So one inch will equal 350 inches, or one foot will equal 350, which is about the size of the submarine. Uh, but that's a physical replication. When they talk about computer models, and you know, I spent, after my days in submarine, I spent 35 years in the high-tech field and doing custom application development uh, uh, um, database work primarily. And computer models are, is quite different from a physical model. It is code, and you try to capture the, the formulas that create whatever you're trying to duplicate, but it's all in bits and bytes. And it is only as good, the output is only as good as you have estimated the input. And so the, the value of a computer model is it tells you what to look for. But you have to validate that model by saying, okay, here's if, if we apply this model, here is what it'll say the results will be. Let's see if that compares to the real world. You know, if you're, for example, doing a model of an engine and you say, right, here's how much uh, horsepower we should expect out, you hook it up to on your bench and see how much horsepower, uh, horsepower it actually produces. Or like a wind tunnel when you're doing that. Uh, a wind tunnel, for example, is a, is, is a real setup but you can model it well with a computer and you, uh, you tweak it and you see what it, uh, same with uh, uh, flying a plane. Tremendous, uh, you, you know that uh, flight schools now will allow you a number of hours by, uh, by running a computer simulation, you know, uh, of, a, of a flight simulator. But that's just bits and bytes, but they test that and say, okay, in our thing that we say we put a bank at 10, uh, 10 degrees, What's the radius of a, of a circle for, you know, a Cessna 172, for example? Well, then you test it against the reality, and whoops, we missed there, and we adjust that model so that it is as, as almost as, as close to reality as they can possibly get, so that today it is, they get credited with their some flying time by actually being in a simulator. They don't compare it to uh, the, the reality. Now, they say, uh, the argument is, oh, well, we can't experiment on the Earth. We can't change things. But now the model's been around for 30 years. And so we've had observation of, so what is the temperature? And they've all consistently been hot. In other words, they're predicting a lot more heat than actually shown up. The other criticism is, say, okay, well, I appreciate you can't change the world, but why don't you go back a uh, hundred years? We had pretty good records uh, then of, um, you know, uh, every ship uh, in the ocean would uh, record what the temperature was, the pressure, you know, barometric pressure, uh, cloud cover, uh, you know, as much uh, as they could possibly record, and they do that on land stations. So let's take that data and then run forward with your model and see how close it came. For example, it's much hotter in the 1930s than it is today. Uh, CO2 continued to go up, and the temperature went down from the 1930s till the uh, uh, 70s. Well, wait a minute now. CO2 is going up, and temperature is going down. The coefficient of correlation is negative. Let's tweak that model to make it uh, so the observed data will fit the model. Well, they haven't done that. They've only started from 1980 and gone forward, and they've done a lousy job of that because it doesn't work.